Let me put a hat on. Robbie McEwen. It's a bit glare this ring light. That's the oh, Jesus, man. Looks like a Parramatta crackhead out here. We're in uh, Beulah Park, East Adelaide, South Australia. Robbie McEwen ditched, sacked, fired, contract, not renewed, whatever you want to call it, from SBS Cycling Tour de France. And why I think that's a really good idea. Um, you know, actually, it's not a good idea. There's a positive out of it. And I'll, I'll let you know at the end of the video what the positive one is. Robbie McEwen, if you don't know, he's a very well-established road cyclist from Australia, sprinter, you know, back in the 90s career through to 2013, 14, just, yeah, a guy that's been around and really a uh, trailblazer pioneer for a current breed of cyclists out there, you know, he's with the Stuart O'Grady and the Hank Vogels and the Patrick Yonker, Scott Sunderland, that sort of era. Rabo Bank, yeah, Lotto Domo for years, and then Green Edge at the end, and Katusha. So, a guy that's been around and a fantastic commentator. Like, when Robbie started commentating, I was like, damn, this dude's really, really, really good. I knew he's a, a man, a gift of the gab, man, you yeah, know, mouth of the south. He could talk, but I didn't know he's that good of a commentator. He's very good. He's like Chris Horner. Those two guys have found it's fantastic. But SBS cut this guy off, Rob McEwen, just, <laughs> just put him, launched him into the barriers. And to Mike Tomolaris. Mike Tomolaris, like, you know, I've met Mike Tomolaris before. I remember in 2004, Tomolaris needed a bike. And I remember going, I think this, good. this guy's a nice guy, man. It's Mike Tomolaris. He's a good, he's a nice dude. I was inspired to go back home, get him my freaking Trek OCLV Durace, and say, here you go, man. I rode two bikes into town because I don't have a car. Never had a license. Rode two in Tomolaris, rode my bike. Don't come in where he went. Gave it back. No, no scratch on it. No worries. But just a nice guy, man. You know, just a chill dude. He's not, doesn't have that same commentator skill because he doesn't race Tour de France like McEwen, etc. But Tom Alaris, man, he's just got that good voice. A fantastic ambassador for Australian cycling. You know, just, just a good guy. And when SBS cut him, I was thinking, damn. What? You know? Why would you cut Tom Alaris off? S like, I just couldn't work it out. I couldn't work it out. But hey, this is 2022. And this is the weird era we live in. Good things must come to an end. They shouldn't, but they do. And then we hear that McEwen's done. And I'm thinking, damn. And so what we've got left, we've got some feminist Clem Ford sister type chick. I remember listening to, like, I was just like, man, turn this chick off. Turn this chick off. She can do commentary on YouTube or whatever she wants to do. You know, like, she, does, in my opinion, doesn't deserve a spot instead of Tom Alaris and McEwen. No way. I can't, I can't remember what her name is. She's just... This feminists, and, and it's okay if you want to be a feminist and have issues, but don't bring it into cycling, SPS comment, do, do, a, do a Facebook post, do an Instagram, do a TikTok, do your own personal stuff. Like if I was a commentator, I wouldn't bring up vegan issues or whatever in the Tour de France. I mean, I might talk about vegan performance benefits, but I'm not going to talk about so much ethics and stuff because people are just watching the Tour de France for some distraction, okay? Like, you know. So why would we bring it? Anyway, it's this chick, man. And then, and then there's another guy, I forget his name. Michael Keenan or whatever, Keno or something like that. Dave McKenzie's also very good. But uh, this this other guy, and I'm thinking, what, what's he doing here? He was bagging Lance Armstrong. Bagging Lance Armstrong. He's like, no Americans won the Tour de France or something like that. And I was thinking, bro, Lance Armstrong won the fucking Tour seven fucking times. And my friend, you wouldn't have a freaking job now. Because no one in Australia would really care that much. When Lance won the first Tour in 99, and... You know, Robbie McEwen also won his Chantelise A stage. That, that was just like, poof, where Lance won and Robbie won. It's just like, epic times, man. Drugs is part of the deal. That's just, it, there's not, and this Kino guy, a <laughs> Kino guy, Kino body, you know, like, I was like, dude, like, if you think anything's changed today, if you think the Olympic marathon is done natty, if you think the EPO isn't in swimming, in soccer, you can AFL football, if you think that the UFC champions are doing it all on freaking bread and water, you're an idiot. You're an idiot, man. I say it in a nice way. You're a fucking idiot. Naive idiot. So if you're going to bag on Lance, okay, you're right to do that. But you've got to bag on every single champion. Because they have that champion level of fitness as a sumo runner, cyclist, even MMA, etc. You've got to have the EPO in the blood. You've got to have the blood doping. You've got to have the mutant hemoglobin. It's just how it is, man. It's just how it always is. Always was, always will be. When there's money and fame for grabs, people do what it takes to win pharmacology wise so I just found it really distasteful that Lance Armstrong's crowd this Trek Shimano Shram Lance put these brands on the freaking map man 
on the map. I was there in the 90s, man. I saw the change in marketing. I saw the Lance billboards. and, and uh, I made money from Lance selling track bikes, etc. So I would never rag out in Lance. Oh, Lance is dope, bro. He was mean to people. He was mean to people who tried to take him down, man. Lance is a fighter. Lance is the guy on the bunch ride when the redneck turns up in his freaking red ute. Lance is going to have a knuckle with him. He's not going to back down and go, beep, 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 little raffer pussy. Lance is going to freaking ride with his jersey unzipped, wearing gloves to box a dude out, man. He's not one of these little raffer freaking wearers, jersey zipped up all the way. I can't barrack for a starter because Kim Ken- Vinokurov's on there. I've got up here, I can't even breathe, but I'm wearing, I'm wearing no gloves. I've got my zip. Someone give me some attention on Instagram. One of those sort of riders, man. Lance was a, a brawler, man. He's a brawler on a bike. So it's, it's like, duh moment when you think that Lance is going to roll over like some little beta raffer pussy and say, yeah, you can take me down, David Walsh, blah, 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 blah. He's going to fight back. You know what I mean? He's going to fight back. And that's what happened. This is how it is, man. It's like, don't watch professional sport if you don't want to see drugs. Because that's what it takes to be a champion, man. I'm not saying you should do it. I'm saying that's what is done. That's that's the recipe, okay? I'm just saying. But I just laugh on these people. I just, I just, I mean, how dumb are you, man? How dumb are you? You'll cheer on Peter Sagan. You'll cheer on Eddie Merckx. You'll cheer on, you know, Greg LeMond's. But then Lance Armstrong, oh, Lance just took drugs. You think any of the other riders, do you think they're doing it natty? Do you think people are winning big races? think Flanders, Roubaix, Tour de France, Tour of Spain, the Olympic 1500 meters, you know, freestyle, Michael Phelps, Michael Jordan. I think NFL, the basketball, the baseball players, they think they're all natty. <laughs> they think the, the fitness influencer who sells the program away shakes to your 16-year-old girl or boy at home with the steroid muscles bulge and rip jacked at 40 or 50 or even 20, 17-year-olds. Kids are doing a, th- a gram a week of test now. Some of them are. You know what I mean? You're dreaming, man. Dreaming. Dreaming. <laughs> and this Kino guy, I remember seeing a... Like this, this, this guy sounds like he's off his chops in half his videos anyway. So you're taking j- j- stims or whatever alcohol. You're, you're taking something, Kino boy. You know, that freaking Matt Heyman one, mate. You're off your chops, bro. Look at the replay on that one. So if you're going to criticize Lance for doing drugs, do his job better. But then you're going to do drugs to do your job better. Just saying, you know, just asking the question. Isn't that hypocritical? Anyway, I, the re- the positive spin-off that Robbie McEwen's axed is that I no longer will lose sleep watching the Tour de France. Why the F would I stay up? If Tom Olaris and McEwen ain't there on the mic, why would I stay up to listen to some Clem Ford wannabe and some frickin' Raffers, no glove, jerseys it up all the way, frickin' try hard hypocrite? I'm gonna get a good night's sleep. It's gonna be the first Tour de France ever in 20 something years, 30 years of watching it, whatever it's been. That's on TV. Well, maybe it hasn't been that long, but you know what I mean? I'm going to actually be able to sleep for the Tour de France. I'm not going to start till 2 or 3 a.m. and watch that anymore because I don't listen to Clem Ford and that freaking hypocrite dude. That's just my personal opinion. Not hating, just saying. If you want a female commentator, get rid of that freaking... Oh, my God. <laughs> just get rid of her and put on someone like... Who's good? Um, and Edmondson. It's got a, a great depth of, of road racing experience. I heard her say on the mic. I was like, she's pretty good. You know, someone like that. It's got to be a personality who doesn't come across as a Clem Ford wannabe. Now, if you want to be a Clem Ford wannabe, that's okay. It's your choice. But please don't bring it to cycling. Just saying. And commentators, commentators, it's okay to say the word sugar. The S word. The sugar word. Oh, the, the riders are taking on nutrition. They're getting nutrition into their muscles. They're getting nutrients into the... It's sugar, man. Just say the freaking word. That rider, that gel, it's sugar. Take on some nutrition now. It's very important. This last bit of the stage is taking on some nutrition, getting some fruit. Sugar. Sugar, 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 man. All right? <laughs> it's your due responsibility to educate the audience. Do you know how dangerous it is, the people out there thinking these riders are doing ketosis or whatever? Riding down a hill in ketosis? None of the riders are doing that. They're going to be crashing over the edge. So it's your due, due responsibility to put your social narrative of sugar phobia away and say, these riders are having sugar. No one's pushing out big watts or maintaining watts in an undercarb ketogenic state. No one is. All right? you, sugar's okay. Sugar water. All right? That's what they're having. It's not an electrolyte drink. It's sugar with some electrolytes. But the primary thing is sugar. When your muscle glycogen is running low, bye-bye watts. Doesn't matter how much EPO you're on or whatever. Look at Contador and Paris Nice 2009, was it? Bye-bye 
You can have all the best shit in your veins that you want, but if you don't have enough muscle glycogen, sugar every 20 minutes, bye-bye, out the back, see you later. I do know what would you know, mate? You, you, the sugar, sugar's bad, mate. Carbs are bad. Your body doesn't need sugar. You need fats. You need healthy fats and proteins. Protein, lean proteins, healthy fats, mate. Sugar's bad. You don't need sugar. Sugar's bad, mate. Look, listen to Jamie Oliver, mate. Jamie Oliver, FTP 520 watts, mate. What are you doing, dude? What are you doing, mate? You're still on rim brakes, mate. Disc brakes for the win. Error, disc grand jazz works, mate. Yeah, 20 grand. Made in China for 200 bucks. I've paid 20 grand. I'm a fucking legend. Yeah.